Good morning and welcome to this English lesson about friendship. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was kind of caught off guard there. I'm trying to do like this really good introduction, but I kind of failed. Uh, maybe I should start again. Hello and welcome to this English lesson about friendship. Today, I picked a topic that I didn't think there would be a lot of words or phrases to talk about, but there are a lot of words and phrases when you start to talk about friendship. Um, it surprised me actually. Um, not, uh, not a crazy amount of words and phrases, but there are a lot of words and phrases about friendship. But before we start, let me just say welcome to this English lesson. I just want to say hi to all the people in the chat. Hi to Rita and Alexi and Sam and Lolly and Rod and Madi and uh, Samin and Hamoud and Pierre. There are so many of you here right now. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, friendship. Should we just get started or should I explain the rules of the lesson? Probably. Please keep the chat in English. Please use the link that Todd or Dave will share in the chat uh, in order to ask a question. Please do not ask questions in the chat. There will just be too many people and too many questions for me to do that in an orderly fashion. But let's get this lesson started. Um, I'm quite excited to do this. I feel like um, I'm back a little bit in my routine when I do a live stream because I've been quite busy this week. Let me do an audio check. Looks like everything is good. So, let's talk about friendship everybody. So, friendship this is the noun we use to describe the act of being someone's friend, okay? So, many of you have friends in life. You might have one friend. You might have many friends but the noun we use to describe this is the noun friendship. Now, I'll be honest. We don't use the word friendship a lot in casual English. Instead, we usually say that we are friends with someone, okay? So, friendship though is the noun. You can say, oh, I have a great friendship with my friend Tom. Oh, Tom and I have a, a friendship that goes back years, okay? So, this is the way you describe just being uh, I, I just want to keep using the word friend but it's the way you describe uh, liking someone, being with someone and being a good friend to them. We would call it a friendship. Um, so, let me talk about then the more casual way. Uh, the more casual way to express this is to say that you are friends with someone. So, we use the structure to be friends. So, I am friends with a couple of people. I, Jen has some friends. So, she is friends with people as well. So, notice that we use the verb to be and we use the word friends in order to describe a friendship, okay? So, you could say that my son is friends with his friend Fred. Okay, or I could say my daughter is friends with um I, th I think her friend's name is Julie but I can't remember. So, this is the structure we use to describe a friendship in normal English conversation. There's a couple of things that you do with friends. One is that you spend time with them. Okay, so anytime you are with a friend, anytime you are with someone who is your friend, you would say that you are spending time with them. So, you would say things like I really like to spend time with my friend Joe or I haven't had enough time to spend time with my friend Joe this past week or last weekend I was able to spend some time with my friend Joe. So, we the word spend is actually used with money as well, right? You spend money but we also use it when we talk about being with friends. Um, hey, I do want to give a shout out specifically to Brent, American English with this guy. Um, Brent is also a teacher in real life like me. Uh, and Brent and I were actually emailing back and forth this week because both of us have pre-year meetings uh, and we're getting ready to teach. Um, so, it was really fun for me. Brent, thank you for uh, being a good email pal. That's how I would describe Brent. Uh, we shared what our meetings were like. Talked a little bit about masks. I wear my mask diligently at work right now. Um, Anyways, enough about that. Let's move on to the next one. You also hang out with friends. So, there's a lot of ways to describe being with your friends but I think the two most common would be to say that you spend time with a friend or that you hang out with a friend, okay? Um, so, I would even say this about at my age, I would even say this. I would say, you know, um, I need to make some more time to hang out with my friends more. Um, I'm too busy. I work too much. 
I don't have enough time to hang out with my friends. So, it's not just young people that hang out together. It is a very common way uh, to talk about hanging out or being with people. I was gonna use the phrase to describe the phrase. You're not supposed to do that by the way as an English teacher. Uh, you're supposed to find other words to describe it. Um there are a couple different kinds of friendships, okay? Different degrees of friendship and one is what's called a best friend. Many people have a best friend. So, they'll have two or three friends but one of those friends is just really special to them. One of those friends is someone they maybe spend more time with. They get along with that friend really well. They enjoy being with that friend and they could become best friends. Um uh, here is a great example. When I was in kindergarten, so school in Canada goes from kindergarten up to grade 12. Um when I was in kindergarten, I made friends with somebody and that person became my best friend and he is still my best friend. Um he is a friend that I talk to quite often. Um so a best friend is an extra special friend. That's how we would describe it. Um you might also have a childhood friend. So, the friend I just described, I could also at my age say he's an old childhood friend, okay? So, he's a childhood friend. He's a friend that I started a friendship with when I was a child, okay? Um so, many people when they go to school, when they go to elementary school or what we call grade school when they are young, they will make friends and then later in life, they'll refer to that person as a childhood friend, okay? So, Jen has a couple childhood friends. That means that even though she's in her 40s, oh, I almost, I think I said Jen's age almost. I'm not supposed to do that. Jen is very young actually. Um she has a number of childhood friends. So, these are friends that she made when she was a child. Um another phrase you might see a lot on the internet right now is the phrase BFF. This is actually a uh, an acronym or a short form for best friends forever. It's used a lot by girls, teenage girls. So, they will say, oh, this is my BFF. So, it uses the phrase best friend but it adds the element of time indicating that this is going to be my best friend forever. Uh, and they do say BFF. They'll say, oh, I'm gonna call my BFF or um, can I have my uh, can my BFF come over? Um, so it's a very common term and it stands for best friends forever. Um, older people don't use this phrase maybe once in a while. Like I don't use BFF. Um, teenage boys don't use BFF. It's very much teenage girls uh, that would use this phrase. Um, let me see where I am. Buddy. <laughs> so a buddy. Th- this phrase is actually used a lot. I'll give you some example phrases. The reason I put a picture of a guy with a truck is because in life, it's always great if you have a buddy that has a truck. This word isn't used everywhere in North America. I'm actually curious if in Brent's area, they use the term buddy. Um but I have a couple buddies that have trucks, okay? Guys might also say, I'm gonna hand out, I'm just gonna hang out with my buddies tonight or I'm gonna go out Uh, My buddies are coming to pick me up at eight. I'm just gonna hang out with my buddies tonight. So, it is somewhat of a male term um but honestly, the phrase, you know, it's nice to have a- everyone should have a buddy that owns a pickup truck. Um it's very common. So, I'm just gonna wait to see if Brent uh heard me ask that question if if people in his area of Maine in the United States use the term buddy uh very often because here it's very common um to use that term. Um A short form of buddy is bud um but it usually comes out in the form of best buds. So, again, this is another term for best friend. Um usually used with children, sometimes with adults but you could say, you know, oh, they are best buds. They're best buds. Um oh, my son has a really good friend. They're best buds. They do everything together. So, best buds is just I guess a more casual way to say best friends. Um (laughs) Brett says, my brother has a pickup truck. It's a lifesaver. Yes, very cool, Brett. Uh we use buddy all the time. It's a great term. We use it exactly the same way. Yeah, let me back up for a sec on that, Brent, because um we also some people use buddy to talk about small children, like small uh, uh like small boys. They'll say like, "Hey buddy, how's it going?" Like when I talk to my nephew, I often call him buddy. <laughs> Sounds weird when I say it though but we do use this a little bit that way as well. Um let me get back to the right slide here. Um bestie. So, this phrase I don't hear in regular 
English conversation in my work, even though I work with teenagers, um, I do see this word from time to time, but I don't know if it's super popular in Canadian English. Um, but bestie is another word for best friend. You know, oh, she's my bestie. Um, I, I don't use it. You can probably tell even when I just used it in a sentence, it did not sound natural. Um, I do hear this word sometimes though. Um, I do hear people use it on television shows and I hear it sometimes in movies. So, I thought I should include it. Um, Brent in the chat is saying, small boys here, exact same, maybe under the age of nine, you would call him buddy. Like, hey buddy, how was your soccer game? Or, hey buddy, good to see you. Uh, do you want um, me to uh, come and watch your next soccer game? I don't know. I, I only have one nephew, so I don't use the phrase very often. Um, let's see here. Let's get back uh, to the slides. Um, we have the phrase pal. Um, again, this is not, sorry, word pal. We have the word pal. This is not a word um, I use very often. I don't use the word pal. Um, I, I don't know if it's a little more American but pal is simply another word, uh, another word to refer to someone who is a friend. Um, like, let me see here. Um, like my pals. I went out with my pals. Yeah, it's not a natural word for me to use but it's definitely an English word that means friend. Um, I think we are going to do some questions. Yes, let's do that. Let me get to the question area. Again, I will uh, stop from time to time during the lesson to do questions. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Um, Not sure what this question. I'll I'll just pull it up. So Celeste says, I, congr I congratulate you for a great video a few days ago. It is more difficult to have more funds. It looks like a balloon. If it inflates more, it will easily burst. So um, yes, I I'm just gonna move to the next question. Um, by the way, please uh, be patient with me today. Um, my brain is working really well, but I had a really long week. And I have a lot on my mind right now. I definitely have time to do a live stream. That's not a problem. Uh, but if I seem like I'm not making sense or going too quickly, just let me know in the chat. Um, I see in the chat, Zalad say guys use bro instead of BFF and I forgot the word bro. But yes, guys sometimes refer to other guys as bro. Like, hey bro, um, we should go see that latest movie, Tenet. Um, I wanna see that movie by the way. Uh, let's see here. Um, Henry says, hi, teacher Bob. How often do you think we should con should con how often do you think we should contact friends to remain to maintain cordial relationships? <laughs> Thank you. So, at my age, Henry, I only really see my friends about twice a year. Um, we are all married. We are all dads. We are all quite busy. Um, we do talk regularly. We do message each other. Um, but we usually go to see a movie a couple times a year and we'll go out for coffee or a beer afterwards. Um, so, uh, I don't know. I think as you get older, especially if you start a family, it becomes more difficult to maintain uh, relationships. Uh, Dave's here, says he's a bit late and he completely lost track of time. So, if you remember too, Dave is a university student. So, Dave has a brand new schedule in his life as well right now but no problem, Dave. Thanks for being here, man. Um, Let's see here. Um, next question is from Renata. Good morning, Bob. How are you doing? Do you have a childhood friendship that lasts until today? I'm sorry if my question is a tad personal. Have a great day, sir. Yes, I do actually. Yep, I have a friend uh, that I met in kindergarten and uh, we are still good friends today. Uh, he got married a little earlier than I did. So, his kids um, are all a bit older than mine. So, um, that does create a challenge because when I had really little kids, his kids were a little bit older. So, he had more freedom to do things uh, and I didn't. But yes, I do have a childhood friend. We talk quite regularly. Um, next question here. Um, Hi, teacher Bob. Hope you are well. Thank you. Do you think what is more important than having in common in friendship? So, I'm gonna rephrase this question. Um, what do you think is the most, the most important thing to have in common when you have a friendship? I think you need to like doing at least one or two things that are similar. My best friend and I really like technology. So, a common thing, something that we have in common is that we like technology. So, often when we are together, we talk about family, we talk about our kids, we talk about how things are going 
but we often end up talking about technology because we have since the very beginning uh, liked technology. So, Vita says, is it correct to say I had a row or a row, I guess, with my friends or we have just quarreled? So, in my part of Canada, we would not use, it is totally correct to say that. I think it might be quite British. In my area of Canada, we would simply use the word fight even though both of those words, I think it's row. I think you're supposed to say I had a row with my friends. Um, we would not use those words. Totally correct to use them but we would use the word fight. Like, oh, I had a fight with my friend the other day. It was, we didn't agree on something and we just had a big fight. It wasn't good. By the way, um, sorry, microphone. By the way, my friend and I didn't have a fight. That was just a little example for you. Uh, let's see here. Let's do one more question and we will get back to the lesson. Rod says, Mr. Bob, hope you're well this morning. Yes, I am, Rod. What is the most important trait in a friendship for you, sir? Thank you so much. I think um, probably the most important thing is just trust and consistency through all challenges in life, okay? And we'll talk a little bit about different kinds of friends in a bit but the kind of friends that I appreciate are the friends who are um, available and kind and helpful when you are having a good time in life and when you are having a bad time in life. So, you really know who your true friends are when you start to have some bad things happen in your life for sure. Uh let's see. Um next question. Layla. Hi, Layla. Uh hi, dear teacher. It's been a long time. Haven't seen your live stream. I was on holidays in my hometown for a month now and I'm back and happy to see you again. Hi to all your followers. Well, hi, Layla and thank you for for coming back. I hope you had a good time. Ario says, hola, Mr. Bob. No question today. Be safe. Thanks, Ario. It's, I, I appreciate that because it is, we would use the phrase nerve wracking. It is nerve wracking to go back to work for me right now. I have been quite isolated in my home and now I am in a building with many people and next week, many, many students will be returning to school. So, it has been nerve wracking. I have been wearing my mask faithfully. I have been doing everything I'm supposed to do to stay safe. So, thanks, Ario, for that little message of support. Um, so, Ruslan says, hello, teacher Bob. Best wishes from Russia. How can I describe a friend I can always trust? Reliable? Any more synonyms for that? Thank you, dear sir. I would just say it is a good friend or you could just say they are trustworthy. You could say they are reliable but I probably would use the phrase that you have a friend who is always there for you, okay? Um that's a very common way to describe a friend that you trust is to say, you know, my friend, he, he's just always there for me. And that means that whether you're happy, whether you're sad, your friend is available to talk on the phone or to go out and have a coffee. They are always there for you. Let's get back to the lesson. The next word I have is kind of a word um and it's the word frenemy. So, a frenemy is kind of a funny combination of the word friend and enemy and a frenemy is someone who seems to be your friend but maybe isn't your friend. So, you might have someone you work with who is very friendly and always kind to you but then when your back is turned, they say bad things about you. So, we would say that person is a frenemy. Um it's again a newer word. I don't even know if it's in the dictionary but you will hear this word on TV shows uh and movies and things like that. So, you see the guy has like the sign on his back, kick me. So, probably his the person he thought was a friend as soon as he turned his back secretly put a sign on his back that says, kick me. So, a frenemy um is not a nice friend. They are actually someone who seems like a friend but isn't. Um and we could also say that that person is two-faced. When we say that someone is two-faced in English, it means that they behave one way when they are with you but then they behave a different way when they are not with you. So, when you are with them, they might be nice and kind and say nice things about you but then when you are gone, they start to say mean things about you. So, when someone is two-faced, it's like they have two completely different personalities. So, not a very nice thing. Uh I do wanna pause and say hi to the 472 people watching. Thanks for being here. Uh there is a subscribe button there if you wanna click it. That is always a good thing to do. Um family friend or friend of the family. So, you'll have friends in life 
but your family might also be friends with people and you might refer to them as friends of the family or a family friend. So, here's a good example. Um down the road, there is a person who was friends with my dad when my dad was alive, okay? And he's kind of my neighbor but we usually refer to him as a friend of the family um because he was friends with my dad. He's not my friend like He's not my mom's friend. He's not friends with my brothers or sisters but he was friends with my dad and he still is someone we see and talk to quite often. So, we refer to him as a friend of the family. Um this is a common phrase in English. Um you might hear people say things like um oh yeah, we're having a party this weekend. Um yeah, we have a few friends of the family are coming over. So, that just means different people who are friends with different people in your family. Um It's nice to have a friend of the family that lives just down the road um because then when I have questions about farming, I can go ask him. So, um a few not quite friend words. We'll do two of these. An acquaintance is simply someone you know. They're not someone that you necessarily go out for coffee with. They aren't someone who you see regularly and they aren't someone who you like so much and spend time with so much that you would say they're a friend but they are still someone you know. So, you would simply call them an acquaintance, you know. Oh, he's an acquaintance of mine, right? Um sometimes you have people that you meet through work. Maybe you know people that work in a different place but do the same job as you and you see them every once in a while. So, they're not really your friend but you do know them a little bit. You would say that they are an acquaintance. Um a person you work with, you might be friendly with but they might not be your friend. We would say they are your colleague. So, all of the people you work with, you would refer to as colleagues. You could also refer to them as coworkers, okay? Both words work. Um so, these are people that acquaintances and colleagues aren't friends but you might do things with these people that you would do with friends. For instance, sometimes I go out to eat with my colleagues. Sometimes we go to a restaurant. Um when I go to a teacher's convention, I have a few people that I'm acquaintances with and I will I will talk to them at the teacher's convention. Um let me get to the next one here. Like two peas in a pod. So, we have a phrase in English to describe people who are very very similar to each other. This can be because they look a lot alike. Sometimes you'll see two brothers and you'll say, oh, they're like two peas in a pod or you'll say, they look identical or they look like identical twins. Um so, it can be used for physical description but it's often used as well uh for describing people that do a lot of the same things and like doing a lot of the same things. So, let's say maybe these two boys love playing soccer and they like wrestling and they like um running around outside and throwing sticks at trees. I don't know what. I'm trying to remember all the things I did when I was that age. If they like all of the same things, We might say they're like two peas in a pod. Um my best friend and I when we were teenagers really liked computers like I said and people could have said, you know, they're like two peas in a pod. All they talk about is computers. Um so, it's a way to describe physical appearance but it's also a way to describe people who do the same activities. Um a friend uh oftentimes if you stick up for someone It means you defend them and a friend will often stick up for you, okay? So, good friends usually think the same way as you and believe the same things and if you need someone to defend you in life, a friend will stick up for you, okay? So, right now, there are many protests around the world um, because people are sticking up for each other. So, when people see someone treated badly because of the color of their skin, They have this desire to stick up for them and so, we have a lot of people around the world right now sticking up for each other, showing their support. A good friend will stick up for you, okay? Um if your friends don't stick up for you, I'm not sure they're a good friend. Um and then the next one is to have someone's back. So, uh this comes originally from how people would fight. You see these two guys here have their backs to each other but you when you say that your friend has your back, It means that they agree with you. They will stick up for you. They will do what they need to do to support you when you do something. So, a good example would be maybe you lost your job and you don't have 
any income. You aren't earning money. Um, a good friend might have your back. A good friend might come over and say, look, I'll, I'll give you 500 bucks. You don't need to pay me back. I got your back. Okay. Just use the word back twice there. But when someone supports you or defends you or helps you in life, you could say that they have your back and definitely friends have your back. Um let me see here. Um we'll do this one and then I'll go back to some questions. Uh we have a little phrase in English, man's best friend and this is how we refer to dogs sometimes. Uh you'll know this if you watch the lesson on pets. Um that it is just a cute way to refer to dogs. We say that dogs are man's best friend um and you can see this little puppy here. He looks like he's ready to be someone's friend. So, we took the word best friend. We add the word man in front. Probably not politically correct to say man's best friend right now. Um we probably should say uh modify the phrase to say it's uh you know human's best friend but this is an older phrase that still used man's best friend. Uh, let's look at a few questions again. Let me get to the next question. Uh <laughs> Beth says, I wanna make take a friend from a person who wears glasses with a black black. I think you're saying I wanna make friends with a person who wears glasses with a black frame. What do you advise me? Is he dangerous? This person, I am not dangerous. I am quite I'm trying to get my glasses to go on straight. I kind of sat on them. So, um yeah, I am it's quite safe to be friends with me. Um next question is from Sugar Daddy. Hi, Bob. How's it going? Do you have a lot of friends? I actually don't have a lot of friends. When I was a teenager, I had a lot of friends. Until um I got married, I had a lot of friends but as my friends got married and started to have children, we drifted apart. I don't have that phrase. I don't think I have that phrase in my lesson but when friends drift apart, it means they no longer spend time with each other. Um for those of you that are younger, if you at some point in life do meet someone and get married and have children, you'll realize that you will drift apart from some of your friends because when you become a dad or mom, you become busier taking care of your kids and you have less time to maintain a lot of friendships. So, do I have a lot of friends right now? No, I have three really good friends. I have a really nice best friend and uh that's really that's it right now. So, and Jen's my friend. You can be friends with your spouse as well. Did you know that? Uh let's see here. Lolly says, hi, Bob. Have you already sold a lot of beautiful flowers of your beautiful flowers? Yes, we even this morning, we sold some. Uh let's see here. Valentina says, uh Hi, Bob. Nice to see you again. What is more correct to use when we talk to our friends? Please help me or give me a hand. So, if I think about it, I would say, hey, can you come over and give me a hand on Saturday? I need to move this dresser or can you come over and help me on Saturday? I need to fix my car. We would use both. Yep. Can you give me a hand? Can you lend me a hand? Can you help me? All of those are fine for sure. Um I'm gonna jump back to the lesson for a bit. I'll do a few slides and then we'll do uh members questions in a little bit. Uh pen pal. So, this is an older word but it is still used. I often encourage people who are learning English to find a pen pal. A pen pal is someone who you send letters to and they send letters back to you. Um you can also have a pen pal online. So, I actually have a pen pal right now. Uh uh someone who I write to in French and she writes back in English and we correct each other's emails. So, a pen pal doesn't have to be someone that you send an actual letter to in an envelope with a stamp. It can be someone you correspond with online. Um so, it's a different kind of friend. Usually, a pen pal is in a different country or is far away but it's someone who you are friends with through email or through letters. Um often when children are around age 11 or 12 in school, they might do a project where they have a pen pal in a school in a different part of North America. When I was in grade five or six, I had a pen pal in the United States and at school, uh every couple weeks, we would write letters to each other. So, pen pals are people who you write letters to. Um a fair weather friend. So, a fair weather friend is the kind of friend who is only around and only hangs out with you when life is good and as soon as your life hits a rough patch. So, a rough patch is when things aren't good or when you're sad 
or when things aren't going well, a fair weather friend isn't around very much. So, a fair weather friend is only around when you are happy. A fair weather friend is only around when your life is going good. Um I've had some fair weather friends in life. They can be good friends. Um they could be quite fun to hang around with. It could be quite fun to spend time with them but it is a bit disappointing when you do need help in life and you realize that a couple of your friends might be fair weather friends. That means they're only around when the weather of your life is good. Do you see how that phrase works? So, a fair weather friend is only around when your life is good. Basically, a play on the word weather that when the weather of your life is good, the friends will be around. Um let's see. Um what do I need to do next here? Let's do in common and then we will go to members questions. Let me get this slide a little bit better. So, I did mention this word a bit earlier because it came up in a question. Um usually when you are friends with someone, it is because you have something in common. When you say that two people have something in common, it means they share an activity or interest in life. So, these two boys are playing chess. Might be checkers. I can't actually see the pieces on the board. Um so, they have that in common. Um often friends will have um they'll play the same sport. So, they will have that in common. As I mentioned, my best friend and I both really like technology. So, we have that in common. So, when you say that people have something in common, it means that they share an interest. Um let me go to questions and I'm gonna flip to members only questions for a sec. I do wanna say hi to all of the people who are currently watching. It is awesome to have all of you here. Don't forget there is a subscribe button right over there if you want to subscribe to this channel. Um and basically what I've done right oh 567 people. That's a lot of people. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. Um chat is members only right now. Thank you if you are a member and have clicked that join button below and decided to support my channel. Um that is awesome of you. If you are a member, you can ask questions in the chat right now. Um Dave and Todd are in the chat as well. Sometimes they can help but I will try to answer those questions. Uh and Brent is quite helpful sometimes. So, that's cool as well. Um so, I'm gonna do questions from everyone for about 10 minutes while I also take questions from the chat. Um Lolly Lolly, can I say we are chat friends, you and me? So, interestingly enough, you can describe friendships in a lot of ways, right? Like, oh, we're just sports buddies. Uh we're just friends in the chat. Like, I think I would say it that way. Like, I'm no, you could say a chat friend. Like, I have a lot of chat friends on Bob the Canadian's YouTube live stream or I have a lot of chat friends when Brent from American English does a live stream. You could say that. You could kind of make up little words to describe friendships as well. Panthera Nori. Hi, Panthera. It's good to see you. Uh you've been busy as well, I've noticed. I know a few weeks ago, you were juggling work and coming to the live stream. So, cool to see you. Hi, teacher Bob. So, good to see you again. This class, the class is awesome. Well, thank you very much, Nori. Sam the Taiwanese says, hi, teacher Bob. Is that common to borrow to borrow money from friends in Canada if someone is in a predicament or has a financial burden? No. Okay. So, it does happen. It's more common for friends to voluntarily help a friend with money if they think they need it. So, if my friend lost his job, I would offer to help him out. I would say, look, if you need anything, let me know. I'm there for you. Um even if you need some money, if you need me to pay your rent next month, let me know. Friends do sometimes ask for money uh, in Canadian friendships but it's not considered cool to um you know, maybe once or twice in your life, it might be okay but people are generally not receptive when friends ask them for money. Um I had a friend when I was younger who was constantly asking for money and eventually, people got tired of that, okay? So, I would tell you this. It depends on the degree of the friendship. If my best friend came to me and said, I just lost my job. I'm starting another job in three weeks but money is tight right now. That means that he doesn't have a lot of money. I would say, you know what? I'll help you out. What do you, what do you, what do you need me to do? Do you have a, a bill you need me to pay? Like at the garage, I'll pay it. So, it's common to offer to pay but it's not common to ask for money. Um Hey, Son says, hi, Bob. Hi. Uh Lolly says, merci, Bob le Canadien. No problem. Nakshtrin says, hello, Sir Bob. How are you? I am good. Thank you very much. 
And we have Gua Ho Yu has joined as a member. Thank you for supporting the channel. That's awesome of you. And Key Park says, hello. Sorry, I'm late. No problem, Key. Uh, remember, uh, if you are a member, you can ask questions in the chat right now. Um, Jake says, do people use the word buddy to address animals? Yes. Um, my brother-in-law, I think maybe I've heard him a number of times. No, maybe not. But he calls his dog buddy. Like, hey, buddy. Uh, he calls our dog Buddy sometimes as well, even though our dog's name is Oscar. So, yes, people do use the word Buddy. Um, Brent says, it's a slippery slope to lend money to friends. Yeah, it's it's culturally not very popular in Canada or the United States to lend money to friends. It, I mean, maybe once or twice, but I think we culturally are a society that's very much not into lending money to family or friends, by the way. I mean, friends or family, by the way. Um, and then Jan says, what did most with chili friend? I'm not sure how your question works, Jan, or what your question is. Sorry about that. Um, Lolly says, I've never asked for money from my friends. There you go. And then Lolly, just make sure you put the R in friends because if you forget the R, it becomes fiend. And a fiend is actually a mean, not very nice person. Or if you read old stories, a fiend is like a, a bad person or being. I'm not sure exactly what a fiend is. So be careful with the R there. Samuel says, hi, Bob. Some of my friends are going to get married in the coming years. I wish they would take it slowly so we can hang out together more. I don't want to get married. This is a challenging time in life if you have friendships. Um, for me, I would agree as well because... Most of my friends got married about three or four years before Jen and I got married. And it's a strange time because your friends are dating and planning a wedding. And some of them had children uh, two or three years before I had children. So their life changed and then you feel left out a little bit. Like because I was still young and I could had lots of time to do things. So. Um, so I feel for you, Samuel. Michelle says, hey, what's up, folks? I'm at school now. Cool to hear. Uh, Melody says, I'm glad you're my only friend teacher in Canada. Thank you, Melody. Panthori says, talking to Michelle, so good to see you as well. What kind of school are you at? Uh, Lolly says, oops, thanks for correcting me. Hey, Lolly, you can't learn to speak a language unless you make mistakes. Probably the best sign of a good language learner is that they fearlessly speak the language and make mistakes. You need to be able to do that. Jan says, if you lend many money to friends, you lost a friend. We say, ah, I get it. Yes. Because money has a strange effect on friendships. It really, really does. Um, let's see here. Let me get to the next question here. Tariar says, hello, Bob. How do you think, do you think it makes sense to have friendships with older people? Because I have a friend who's double in age to me and we are doing well. I think it's great. I have friends of all ages. Uh, I have a friend who's many years older than me uh, and we go out for uh, and have a beer every once in a while. Um, I think one of the problems in the world right now, but specifically in North America, is people very much are friends with people the same age as them within a few years. And so you end up with um, older people not connecting well with younger people. I know in Holland, in the Netherlands, if anyone's here from the Netherlands, um, they do a really good job of, of making ways for older people and people my age or younger to interact a lot. Holland's really good at that. So it's very cool. Um, let's see. Michelle says, Panthera's, hey, what's up? I'm at high school. Cool. And Lolly says, yes, you lose your friends and your money. Yes. Yeah. So I think we're all in agreement here that lending money to friends, it's a, it's a tricky business for sure. Um, Let's see here. Um, hello, teacher. This is from Sharef. Hello, teacher Bob. Do you have a friend like a brother to you? I mean, more than a friend. So I would say my best friend, I'm not sure he's like a brother to me, but there are people in life who do have friendships where they would say he's like a brother to me. Okay. Um, and that is a very close friendship. It means that the person is like family. The person is like a brother to you. So yes, uh, very common uh, to hear that once in a while. I wouldn't use that phrase exactly because it's a very strong statement when you say that. Uh, let's see here. 
Next question. Hello, Sir Bob. Like in any relationship, no friendship will be perfect. What compromises would you be willing to make to sustain your friendship? Um, you know, I'm a pretty open-minded person. Uh, a person uh, would need to do something pretty bad for me to stop being a friend with them. Uh, I'll tell you that straight up. I'm a pretty loyal friend, I think. I, I'm not always the best at remembering to call people and talk to them all the time. Um, but I think even if I had a friend who committed a crime and went to jail, if they were a really, really good friend, and if the crime was something they did where they didn't actually hurt anybody, um, like if I had a, I'll be honest, if I had a friend who got caught stealing and got put in jail, I would probably visit that friend in jail. If I had a friend that committed a crime where they hurt someone, I would probably end that friendship. I probably would not ever visit them again. Sounds harsh, doesn't it? I have very low tolerance for violence, I think. Um, let's see here. Um, is there a special word for friends that that are our pets? Like paw friends or I don't know. There probably are little cute phrases. But as I'm not really a pet person, I don't know. I do know man's best friend. Um, I do know some people are really good friends with their dog. Like they'll just say, look, my best friend is my dog. and Or my best friend is my cat. <laughs> so, I don't know uh, if there are more than that. Uh, Regina says, hello. It's nice to meet all of you. Very cool, Regina. Thanks for being uh, cordial in the chat. I am from South Korea. I like learning English. I know it takes time to improve it. Yes, just keep working at it. You will get there uh, at as time goes by. Let's see here. Let me get to the next question. I do have to skip a few here. Uh, so, so this question, let me interpret this. Andre Castro says, hi, Mr. Bob. What's the best way to become friends with a Canadian when you are from outside of Canada? Thanks, Mr. Bob. I would say this. So, if you are talking about the, like maybe you've immigrated to Canada, I would find things to do where you are with other immigrants, but also with other Canadians. So, maybe there are night classes. Maybe there are English classes. Um, but I'm not sure how. I mean, you have to engage in social activity either online or in real life in order to become friends with people. So, look for places where you can chat with people. That's all I would say. Uh, Michelle says, sir, is there any idiom for describing a student who studies extremely well? Kind of a straight A student who is trying to engulf all of this knowledge. We would say straight A student. We would say someone who puts their nose to the grindstone. Uh, we would say um, in the US, a student who does really well sometimes has a 4.0. I think you could even get higher now. But your phrase is correct. A straight A student is what we would use to describe. If I have a student who does really well, I would just say, yeah, they're a straight A student. Uh, Lolly says, I agree. No tolerance for violence. Violence is one of the things in life that can destroy friendships, okay? Um, it Violence, of course, is just a bad thing overall, but for sure. Rod, hello, sir. Saying Rod saying hi to Michelle. Very cool. Norma says, hi, Bob. Real friendship keeps on tough. We live far away from one, the other for many years. That is my case with my friend in Spain. Yes, real friendships can be tough when you live far away from someone. Um, even with the internet and Skype, and email. It can be difficult still. Um, I think 10, 20, 30 years ago, it was even more difficult. Uh, I know my mom, when she was younger, had many relatives in Holland that she only communicated with via letter. And so, that was very challenging for her um, and friends as well. Uh, let me see here. Let me do one more question. I like this word, by the way. Sashin says, how to identify friends because I have been bamboozled by friends. So, when you're bamboozled, it means someone takes advantage of you. So, if someone says, hey, give me a hundred dollars and then I'll give you two hundred dollars tomorrow and then you give them a hundred dollars and you, then you never see them again. You've been bamboozled. They've taken advantage of you. So, I don't know, Sashin. I would just say this. Don't give people money or talk about money or borrow money until you're really sure after a long time that they are a good friend. Um, let me see here. Let me pop back. We need to get back to the slides everybody and we need to get this lesson moving. Uh, I'm going to turn off the members only chat. Give me a second here. We'll just take a moment and let's continue. So, we did in common. When you meet someone for the first time, someone who you don't know and you just have a really enjoyable time with them. Maybe you go to a dinner 
and one of the other guests at the dinner is just really cool. Maybe you are flying on an airplane and the person sitting beside you is just really fun to talk to. Um you would say that you are hitting it off or that you hit it off, okay? So, I would say this about um let's just say this about Brent from American English with this guy. We did not know each other um six months ago um but over the last few months, Brent and I have started to communicate more. We have many things in common. We are both English teachers on YouTube. We are both teachers in real life. And so, as we start to talk via email, I feel like we really are hitting it off. When you hit it off, it just means you start to enjoy talking to someone. So, again, this can happen in many situations but when you hit it off with someone, it means you just like hanging out with them. Um by the way, when COVID is over, I suggested to Brent that we we should drive and meet in the middle somewhere. I think that would be about four hours drive for me to have a coffee because it would be really fun and then if we do that like next spring or summer when COVID is over, we'll make a video for all of you. Um Bob and Brent have a coffee. That would be the really simple title. Um when you and a friend don't get along anymore, when something happens in your friendship um that makes you not want to be friends anymore, we would say that you have had a falling out, okay? So, if I said uh to my son, hey, are you still friends with Joey? He could say, no, we're not friends anymore. We had we had a falling out. Um we don't like the same things. He said something mean. We are no longer friends. So, as much as when you hit it off with someone, that might mean you are going to start a friendship at some point. When you have a falling out, it is the beginning of the end of the friendship, okay? So, if you have a falling out with a friend, it means the friendship is going to end at some point. Um let's see here. Panthera said, I like to have a coffee also with you guys. Best teachers on earth. Thanks, Panthera. Um I just, you know, side note, I just want COVID to be over so that when I have a cool idea, um that I can just do it but COVID has made things tricky. Even the video I did in Niagara Falls was tricky to make because I had to be so careful. Brent says, I feel the same way. I believe we've hit it off. We are cut from the same cloth. Dads, teachers and pretty chill guys. So, yes, Brent, I would agree 100%. Um let's see here. A good friend can also be someone who you describe as a shoulder to cry on. So, as we talked about how a friend will be with you um when you have good times and a friend will be with you when you have bad times. It is nice when you are sad or when something bad happens in life if you have a shoulder to cry on. It doesn't mean you're actually going to cry but let's say you have something in your life that doesn't go well. If you call your friend and you talk for two hours on the phone, you would say that that's a good friend. It's nice to have a shoulder to cry on, okay? So, when you describe Um just someone who's available, someone who's helpful and kind when you are sad, we would just say that that is a shoulder to cry on. Um because we want oh, this girl looks really sad. Well, I hope she's feeling better now. I just I get the pictures from a website that has free pictures for teachers. So, (laughs) excuse me. You want a friend who is there through thick and thin. When we use the English phrase through thick and thin, it does mean good times and bad times, okay? So, you want a friend who is there um and happy for you when you get married but you also want a friend who is there and ha- and helpful and kind if your marriage doesn't go well and you end up getting divorced. So, you want a friend who is available and happy and wants to hang out with you when you graduate from university but you also want a friend who is available and helpful and kind if you lose your job. So, you want your friend to be available through thick and thin. Um that's how you know a friend is a good friend. When they are there for you, when they are available through thick and thin, good times and bad times. Lolly says, I need a shoulder to cry on and Regina likes the expression through thick and thin. Yes, for sure. Uh Let me see. Dave has a question from someone about audio. I've checked a couple times and it seems to be yeah, it seems to be working well for me as well. So, hopefully, it's working well for everybody. Um let me see here. Check where I'm at. When you and another person get along well, it's as if you speak the same language. 
So we don't mean that you both speak English or you both speak Chinese or you both speak Spanish. What what we mean is that you're so similar that you it's like you speak the same language, okay? So it's just a phrase that refers to people who have the same interests, people who have a lot in common, people who are good friends and just love talking to each other. We would say that they speak the same language. So it's just a creative way to describe people who are very similar. Um, when you have a friend, it's important to keep in touch, especially like what I described that as you get older and as life changes, you can forget to phone your friends every once in a while. You can forget to send them a quick text message. It is very important to keep in touch. If you have a friend that moves far in far away, when you say goodbye, you'll even say this to them. You'll say, see you, have a great year living in Spain, keep in touch. Like we, we say that phrase all the time. And what we mean by keep in touch, it means please phone me, please email me, please contact me via Skype uh, a, a few times. So, um, and this, just another example talking about other YouTubers, um, oftentimes when YouTubers are talking to each other, the, we're very busy, but we'll say, um, hey, do you wanna do a video together someday? Sounds good. Well, keep in touch. Let's see if we can do that later this fall. Keep in touch. So it just means please communicate regularly. And it's especially nice when friends uh, keep in touch. Um, you can describe a best friend also as a close friend. So you have normal friends that you hang out with, but you might have friends that are just, clo you're just closer to them. So physically, we use the word close to indicate that you are beside them, but this really means that you are close in spirit, okay? So a close friend, again, is someone you have a lot in common with. It's someone that you just really like being with. Um, let me see here. Uh, in the modern era, we have taken the word friend though and we've changed it a little bit and this isn't really, I don't think it was cool to use the word friend, but on platforms like Facebook, people want to give you, send you friend requests. They want to be your friend on Facebook. They're not really, I guess some of them are your real friends, but some of them are actually acquaintances. So we've used the word friend to describe a relationship on a social media platform like Facebook. So we also have now made it a verb. So you can say, um, you can accept a friend request because if someone wants to friend you on Facebook, you either have to accept the friend request or deny. So notice I use the word friend as a verb, like you can friend people online, okay? So um, I had a friend request the other day because someone wanted to friend me on Facebook and I said, no, no, I didn't say no, I said yes. But you can get friend requests on platforms like Facebook. Um, let's see here. Um, when you don't see a friend for a long time and then when you get together, you want to catch up with them. So you wanna spend some time catching up. So it's nice when I see friends that I had from university, which is very rare by the way, because we live all over the planet. Um, if I do see them, it's nice to catch up with them. It's nice to share the stories of our life and to talk about what we've done since the last time we saw them. So we often just say it's nice to catch up or hey, we should go out for coffee and just catch up sometime. And that means, you know, you, you for me, it would be, talking about all my kids. It would be talking about how uh, how much I just love being married and being a dad. We would catch up and we would share little things about each other's lives. Um, Regina says, I think you sometimes, we'd be you should be careful about friend requests. Yes, very much so, for sure. <laughs> Van Theranoi, Bob got straight. Yeah, I was like, denied, no. Um, let's see here, what's next? There's another version of friend called befriend. So you can befriend someone. I, I probably a good example of this would be you're on a long airplane flight and the person beside you is a really nice person to talk to. And then when you get off the plane, uh, someone says, how is your flight? You can say, oh yeah, I just befriended a person sitting beside me. Uh, we had a nice little chat. So when you befriend someone, I think it just simply means you just had a good conversation and you enjoyed each other's company just for a little bit. So you befriended them. So you were friends with them just for a little bit. Um, I use it mostly to talk about if I'm friendly with strangers on a plane or a bus or on the subway, 
I would say, uh, uh, yeah, the plane ride was really good. I, you know, I kind of befriended the guy in the seat beside me and we talked about all kinds of things. It was just really nice. Um, and then this word cracks me up. Uh, there's something called the friend zone. So, let me take a little time to explain this. Sometimes guys are friends with girls, okay? Some, when I was in high school, this was actually rare. When I was in high school a long time ago, guys were usually friends with guys and sometimes they had girls who were their friends. But sometimes today, guys and girls are friends. But there can be a situation where one of the two likes the other as more than a friend. That means that they want to date them. That means that they are attracted to them. And instead of just being friends, they would rather be a couple. They have a romantic interest in that person. But maybe the other person just wants to be friends. We would say the person who wants to get to know them and maybe fall in love with them is being kept in the friend zone. So, you have two people who like each other. One just wants to be friends. One would like it to be more than friends. By the way, that's another phrase you should know. More than friends means that people are dating. Um, So, the person who wants it to be more than friends is in the friend zone if the other person doesn't think the same way. So, you'll you'll hear this word sometimes on TV shows or on movies, you know. It's like, oh, I really like this girl but I'm just in the friend zone right now. Like, I really like her. How do I tell her I like her because I think I'm just in the friend zone. I think she just wants to be friends. So, this can happen quite often where two people um uh are thinking different things about what the relationship is. So, Uh, Brett says, I was forced into the friend zone a lot in high school. High school is an interesting time for many people, isn't it? So, uh, anyways, that's the end of the slides. I am going to answer questions for a bit. So, if you want to stick around for that, let me switch over. But that was the lesson on friends. Again, I was surprised at how many words and phrases there were. Um, there are even a few that came up while I was talking. Uh, I even saw one in the chat. Um, I can't remember what it is right now but I'll do a few questions for a few minutes. Um, stick around for that if you want to. Thank you to the 626 people watching. That is very cool. Um, next question is from Alexi and Alexi says, hi Bob. Returning to one of the previous questions, let me share a funny quote from Benjamin Franklin. Friendship increases by visiting friends but visiting seldom. <laughs> you know, there's another phrase about romantic relationships that's similar and it's absence makes the heart grow fonder. Um and what that means is that if you have a friendship or if you have a romantic relationship with someone and if you are far apart from that person, it can actually make the friendship better um because you miss the person. And so, this is a similar phrase, Alexi. Thanks for sharing that. That's a cool phrase. Um next question. Uh next question is not a question about friendship. So, uh John, is it hard is that hard making a f- is it hard making friends in Canada? I think making friends is a personality trait. Some people make friends easily. For some people, it takes a lot longer. Um so, it really just depends in every country in the world on your personality. Let's see uh Shivid says, hello, Mr. Bob. How do you make a friend when you were when you were at university? Thanks, teacher Bob. So, often in life, friendships happen because you are with certain people for a long period of time and then friendships develop. In Canada and in many places in the world, that happens in school, okay? So, many of my friendships that I have still today were friendships that started when I was in elementary school or high school or university, okay? I think as life goes on, you do occasionally meet people and become friends but generally, it's usually people who you are around anyways. So, if you take an English class, for instance, and you go every night for 14 weeks uh, to learn English, there's a good chance you'll make a friend in that class, okay? If you go out uh to a nightclub to go dancing, you might make a friend there but you're probably more likely to make a friend in English class because it's a situation where you can talk more and get to know each other better. Conversations are what lead to friendships for sure. Let's see. Oh, I see. Yeah, this is a good question. Hello, teacher Bob. My question is, do you have a friend and the only time when you talk to him is when you call him or send him a message first? I think I'm like 
actually the opposite of that, Alfonso. I think I think I'm the friend that doesn't message enough. So often I make a point of calling a friend on a certain day because I know that sometimes my friend will call me more than I call them. I'm a bad friend sometimes. By the way, that's another phrase you should know. Sometimes people are just a bad friend and I'm guilty of that. Sometimes I am a bad friend. I think everyone's guilty of that though of being a bad friend once in a while. Lolly Lolly says, I make friends easily. I am an extroverted person. So, what's interesting in that comment, Lolly, is kind of backs up what I said. When you are talkative and friendly and you like being with people, you will make friends a lot easier for sure. Let's see here. Um... I'm skipping a few questions here. Sorry about that. They're not quite related and I do trying to find the questions about friendship. Let's do this one. Jennifer says, hi teacher Bob. How do I make friends in other countries? Probably learning the English language is one way to do that. If you can find a way to take an online class that has more than one person in it. So, instead of one to one, you have a good chance of making a friend. There are also language clubs where you can go in your city. Probably with COVID, they don't exist as much right now where you can go and you can learn and practice a language. You have a good chance of making a friend there. So, that's what I would say. Those are the ways to do it. Hey, folks, I know I didn't get to all the questions but I do wanna stop and just thank you so much for watching. I'm Bob the Canadian. Thank you to Panthera Nori and Lolly and Brent and Dave and Todd and all the people that are in the chat. Thank you to all the members. Thank you to uh I'm just trying to thank everybody and I'm really tired right now. So, thank you for watching. I hope it was a good lesson. Um last week someone suggested I should make an outro for my live streams. I forgot to do that. So, it's just gonna end really strangely again with me saying bye and waving quietly while I hit the end button. But again, thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. I hope you like this lesson. I do plan to continue all my lessons as we go forward. If you watch my short English lesson channel though, you'll notice there were no videos today. They'll be up in a bit. I'm gonna work on that right after this Um, but I do plan on both my YouTube channels to continue to release videos and do lessons at my current pace. I might next weekend take some time off but we'll see but uh I'll just gauge how work is going. Anyways, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for learning a little bit about Uh, friendship. I hope you are all good friends to each other as you go through this day and I am gonna stop rambling on and I'm gonna say bye. So, bye everybody.